Number 50. Chemical reactions occur when reactants collide. What are two factors that may prevent a collision from producing a chemical reaction? Okay, so in order for a chemical reaction to occur, there's a couple of things that have to happen, right? And a chemical reaction always occurs when your reactants come together, right? They collide, they, they touch one another, right? And the reactants on a balanced equation are always the left side of your information on a balanced equation. So um, we're going to be talking about the two factors, and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to talk about them in terms of two different diagrams, right? So let's focus in on this one over here. Now, this is a balanced equation. Let's look at the one down below. Now, on the left side, which is our reactants, we seem that we have carbon monoxide, which is CO, coming together with O2, right? I have two oxygen, so O2. And this will yield, now I have a, a black carbon, right? Because the carbon was the black one. And then you have two oxygens. So this would be CO2 plus a lonely oxygen. All right. So since my reactants look different from my products, I know that a chemical reaction has occurred. But what factor will maybe prevent this from occurring in which my CO, my carbon monoxide, and my oxygen come together and nothing happens. Well, if we do see the actual reaction, it seems that one of the products has to be CO2 in which the carbon is in the center. The carbon is the center atom and the two oxygens are flanking the carbon, right? They're on opposite sides of the carbon. So when that happens, the carbon of the carbon monoxide has to be the one that's gonna collide and crash with the oxygen. Because here is that CO2, and the break would be from the O2, right? This is now CO2, and the oxygen is just chilling by itself, as what we've seen here. Now this, collect, this, this, collect, uh, this collection, this collision occurs because that carbon is, is the one that's smacking right into the oxygen. But now let's look over here where we have, still we have carbon monoxide plus O2, but unfortunately no reaction occurred. In this reaction, the two oxygens are the ones that are gonna become smacking into each other, right? They're gonna collide. But in this case, the Molecule CO2 is not when the carbon is all the way to the left. The carbon has to be in the center if, if you're going to draw CO2. And since the two oxygens are the ones that are colliding, mm -mm, that's not good. The oxygen has to be in the middle. So what this basically is all stating is that uh, the one factor that prevents a collision, so maybe I'll say here, is we're going to say incorrect, incorrect, orientation, they love that word, orientation of atoms. Orientation is just basically saying what the compound actually looks like, what position is that compound in, uh, maybe incorrect orientation of, I'll say molecules, not really atoms. So we'll say incorrect orientation of molecules. In this example, the carbon and the oxygen, the carbon monoxide is kind of flipped right? Because I don't want those two oxygens coming together. I want the carbon and the oxygen coming together. So this is the carbon monoxide is in its incorrect orientation or incorrect position. If you're in your correct orientation and everything is going to come together when they collide, boom, right? That makes your reaction. So that's number one. What factor may prevent a collision? If your molecules are just in the wrong positioning or in the wrong or incorrect orientation. Okay. Now, for the second one, we're going to transition over to this little drawing. Now, this drawing is a general energy schematic diagram of um, as time goes on, they say that it's the extent of the reaction, but it's basically just a time. And as time goes on, what happens to our reaction? 
Now, in this case, when you're starting off, when you have no time, right, these are your reactants. So in this specific example, A plus B is going to yield, let's see, all the way at the end, C plus D. Those are your products. Now in this case, since A plus B, there are two letters on the left side, and C, D, there are two other letters, that means that the reaction did occur in this like general schematic. But how are we going to prevent this from happening? Well, there's a very, very, very important type of energy, and that is called the activation energy. Your activation energy is always the energy, and maybe what I'll say, this is your activation energy. Your activation energy is basically the energy needed to get over the hump, right? And there's always going to be like a little hump of a reaction because that's where your most unstable uh, orientations are. It's called the transition state. But for right now, just know that the activation energy, which is represented as EA, the activation energy is the energy always from your start, wherever your reactants are, all the way to the tippy tippy top. That's where your most unstable uh, orientation is throughout the whole um, throughout the whole uh, reaction. It's generally an intermediate maybe, but it's called a transition state in this case uh, because it's only one step. But um, just know that you have to reach that highest amount of energy. I think about it as like a roller coaster ride, right? If you're starting here, you got to, right? Especially by me, we go to Six Flags. Um, I'm actually, I think I'm actually going very soon. Love roller coasters, but you know, Nitro. I'm so sad that they took El Toro down. That was my favorite. But anyway, Nitro, King to Ka, right? You got to go, well, not King to Ka, but for Nitro, it takes a long time to get up to have fun, right? The fun part is whew, going down, right? And everyone's losing their mind, <laughs> me included. But um, the activation energy is that energy to get over the hump, to have some fun, to basically make your products. So what factor may prevent this collision? Well, just know that when these collide, right? When A and B collide, they have to collide at a certain rate. Because what's going to happen is these are not stagnant. When they collide, right, they're, they're coming together and they're moving. So with a rate, this has to come with a large amount of kinetic energy. And kinetic, kinetic energy, just remember, is the energy of motion, right? Collision. And if these molecules are you know, at a rate that's slow, when they collide, maybe you don't get to the top, right? This is like a predetermined amount. You have to get to that, that activation energy to, to make your products. But let's just say if they're moving slowly and they collide and they don't get to the top, oops, they're not going to go to the products. It has to go based off of this line. Um, you could kind of think of it as, you know, when you go to those amusement parks and you and you try to hit that that little thing where they give you like a mallet and you try to hit and it goes ding. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and sometimes you won't reach all the way to the top, right? That's this idea. So the idea here is that if you are going at a slow rate, so maybe we'll say number two over here. If those molecules are traveling at a slow rate, that means that their kinetic energy, their energy of motion is going to be low. And if their kinetic energy is low, you are not going to overcome. So we'll say not going to overcome the activation energy, the energy needed to make the products. So that would be another factor, right? The two factors are if your molecules are in their incorrect orientation, that's a bad thing. And then num uh, factor number two is if they're just traveling slowly, right? Things don't happen slowly. These molecules have to come in fast. Boom, they got to collide with each other.
So the idea is you got to at least get to the top. You could, you know, overshoot it. You know, you could have way more kinetic energy than what's needed. But the idea here is that you can't have less. All right. You got to be moving quick. And that's it. That's all I got for you. What do you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, thanks for coming here. Thanks for hanging out. Right. Um, lots more. Uh, videos on the channel. We also got physics and math videos, so check those out, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, bye-bye.